City strife, horses, chicks, and dogs, they are my neighbors. I cook and sun spin, and move the horses in to the barn, and time to move them out again. Red barge me pastures, beautiful with my houses. The view I see each day when I arise. This life pleases me. It is plain to see I'm living my bucolic life. Well, welcome to the next project. Let me get you straightened out there. Um, if you saw a previous video where I made a beautiful lined dress for my daughter Jessica out of this fabulous Linton Tweed and Linton Tweed that's the the company the maker that the traditional Chanel jackets are made from okay it's very nice stuff I have a piece left over from that dress that I can make a little jacket out of so that's going to be today's project now in the past I have done a going by the book Chanel jacket. I have entire playlists on making a couple different versions of it. I think it was a fabulous project, you know. So I got this pattern out again to see if I could make something work with my scrap. And unfortunately, I don't have enough fabric to use this pattern. I have a lot, but this has a lot of pieces. And because you have a whole lot of pieces and they're all at different angles, it uses up a lot of fabric to cut out, which will not work with my piece. I could make a vest with my piece, but not a jacket, and I wanna make a jacket. So, let me tell you what my idea is. Um, first of all, this is the look I'm going for in general, okay, with this fabric. But I need it to be out of a pattern that has just a single front piece, a single back piece, and single sleeve pieces. So I have this pattern in my stash. Now, there's some big differences. First of all, this is made for knits, so the sizing's completely different. So I will be having to make a larger size than this would intend me to just because I'm using a woven and not a knit. Um, also, the neckline is larger. This one has a smaller neckline. I can make those changes pretty easily. And the last thing is, um, I don't have enough fabric to go full length sleeves. I can go like three quarter length sleeves. That's just what it's gonna have to be. And I looked up and there are some very beautiful modern Chanel jackets with three quarter length sleeves, so. I think we're okay there. So what I'm gonna do is um, I am going to kind of use my pattern that I made all kinds of modifications on and everything for this one and use it to get the sizing and general shape that I want out of this one, okay? But when I go to make it up, even though I'm using this pattern, I'm going to be using these techniques. So this is going to be a really bizarre hybrid between these two patterns. I really hope it works out because it's gorgeous fabric and I don't just want a randomly sized scrap, you know, in my, in my storage, you know. So we're going to see if we can make this work. Let me tip the camera down and show you what I have. Okay, um, one other thing is when I made my dress, it's a, a button down dress, um, I only, I, I bought enough to, buttons to make that dress and I only had two left over. And because these call for buttons all the way down, you know, and then we have the sleeves over here, 
I have decided that I am not going to be putting buttons down the front, nor am I going to be making buttonholes. I will be making a lovely trim going down the front on each side though. And I, since I have one button left, I, well I have two buttons, but I can use one on each side. I'm going to see how that looks. If it looks weird, I'll come up with something else. Um, but I can't go get more of those buttons. It's not like it's a, a button that, you know, they're mass produced right here locally. It's something I bought when I was on a road trip once. So I don't have those handy. So no buttons down the front. And uh, let me go ahead and get started looking at this. So here is my front piece from, we're just going to call this the pink jacket, okay? Now, if I put, if I can find, okay, this is one of the pieces from the Chanel jacket. We're going to call this, because this is the Claire Schaefer pattern, we're going to call this Claire's jacket. This is the pink jacket, okay? So, from Claire's jacket, here is my front piece that has my buttonholes and everything. If I line up the waistline on this piece with the waistline placement on the pink jacket, I get those in line and line up um, just the edge, I would say, because I, um, I'm assuming that they are just going to be wrapping on the pink jacket, wrapping a band around the edge. So they would be having their center front, I'm assuming, right here. They don't actually have it marked. I'm going to assume these dots are center front, okay? This is center front here. So I'm lining up the waistline of Claire's jacket and her center front with the center front here, okay? Let me go ahead and get a weight and put it on there so it doesn't go anywhere. And I realize that I'm going to need more tissue paper here to finish this little addition. So I'm just going to tape a scrap here. When I was cutting it out, there was something right here. I just couldn't cut straight through. So, all right, now we have enough scrap paper to make this work. So because I want to end up with a neckline closer to this, because this is more traditional Chanel, this is very wide. You got your whole collarbone showing and everything, and it's a lot lower. So with this lined up, I'm just going to get one of my little heat erasable pens and kind of sketch in where this neckline goes. All right, so at this point, it's ending right there. Okay, so I just made a little crosshatch right there. I need my ruler. Here we go. So... If this is the top here, the size that I'm going to be doing is the, the on this pattern, it's the size large. Um, in the Claire pattern, it was a smaller size, but because the pink pattern is for a knit and there's very little ease involved, you do a larger size. So what I'm going to do is take from this point, which is the top, over to this shoulder line over here. Okay, it's kind of changing that angle. I'm going to make a mock-up of this before I actually cut into, you know, my last remaining whatever there. So we're going to call this good for right now. What I'm going to do is go ahead and bring this out here so it can line up to this line. Bring it up. And I'm going to call that my new cut line for my neck up at the top there. Let me go ahead and cut that out just so that you can see what I'm talking about. Now, so there's my new neck edge, all right? Now, this length is not quite right either. This is the length that my daughter wants for her jacket. So, again, if I'm lining everything up here, so all of that is right. I'm going to put a mark right down here. Can you see that? Where the bottom of this pattern is. Just do a couple of them. So that then with 
this green line on a straight part of my grid down there underneath. You can kind of see it lining up. I'm just going to draw this across. Okay, so that's going to be my new cut line that way. So let me get this piece cut out and then we'll move on to the back piece. Okay, so now I have my back piece here. This is my front I just did. I need to make sure that this shoulder line is going to match up with the shoulder line over here. Okay, so I'm going to line up this so it's nice and straight. I was cutting along this size here and if I line up See if I can do all of this here. If I put this corner up here so it's matching with this corner, the appropriate corner place there, okay? And I get this front edge um, here. It's poking out about 5 8 7 inch all the way down. Let me just go ahead and put a weight on here to hold it. I can see where I need to make this shoulder and this neckline. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw that in really quickly. So I can cut it. That's not right. This is what I needed the shoulder placement for this, but not this swoop. So let me just leave this little cross hatch point here, this shoulder line there, and then I'm going to go get the back piece from Claire's from Claire's pattern. And with this, I'm going to match up to get the appropriate back neckline. Now, I can tell you when I made this pattern, this neckline was too high in the back and I had a little line right there about half an inch down where it was much better. So since I know what it is and I have to trace it, I'm going to go ahead and cut that right now. So I'm cutting it, well it's maybe not half an inch, maybe it's closer to three eighths of an inch. Okay, all right. So I know this neckline is what's going to fit a lot better all right, so let me go ahead and take this off and replace it with that one. Okay, so I'm bringing the camera a little more so hopefully you can see this red line there, all right? So taking Claire's back piece and center back on this is the fold line. Center back here is right there. So if I line those two up and line up the top corner of this shoulder point here, Then I can draw this neckline in right here. Okay. So now I'm going to trim this neckline here, over, and down. Now I also need to make sure that I have the right length. And again, this piece is the length that I want. So using um, my front piece here, my altered pink jacket front piece, that is the appropriate length based on Claire's front piece, I'm going to put this pattern piece on top of the pink back. And again, we're using the size large here, lining up these little notches up here. I'm going to make a little line at the bottom where my bottom edge needs to be. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and cut this out straight across here and up and then use my new cutting lines up here at the neck edge. And just a quick thing, this is the pocket pattern, the upper pocket, which is the smaller one from Claire's pattern. This is the little pocket that came from the pink one. I'm going to be using the one from Claire's because it has the fold line area and everything up here that I need in order to make a Chanel styled pocket. This is too small so it goes back in the pink envelope. And now let's start working on this sleeve here. 
Um, first of all, because like I told you, I have a limited amount of fabric. I am going to be doing like a three quarter length sleeve and my daughter is already a petite, so her sleeve length, her sleeve length, her full length sleeve length is here. Okay, so um, I'm already gonna be shortening it, which is fine, but I want to make sure that this sleeve is not going to be too tight around the forearm. Let me just look in here. Okay, for the size large, it says it has a 14 inch bicep. For this is 15, 16. All right, if this was for me, and I don't actually know my daughter's bicep number, but if it was for me, and I'm measuring at exactly what my bicep is with clothing underneath it. Okay, well, I have a big arm, you know, that happens, and so it's 14 inches. You want at least two, two and a half inches of ease around your bicep so that you can move around. Um, that's just standard. So I think what I'm going to do is first shorten this and then spread it open some. So the first thing I'm going to do is there is a lengthen and shorten here line. I am just cutting it off straight across there because that's actually fairly close to the length of fabric that I have left to make the sleeve. And I can just extend it a little if I need, if I can, when I'm actually cutting it out on the fabric. So that gives me a place to start. Now for up here, I know based on the bodice size, pieces that I cut out, this cutting line here for the large size, which is the smallest one of this set, is what's going to fit that. But I'm going to want to spread it open. So for right now, the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and cut the, this upper area off of this, um, just at that large size cutting line. Alrighty, so I was looking at this and I think the method I'm going to use um, I'm just going to draw a line. We've got this arranged so that this grain line is straight up and down on my grid underneath. I'm looking at this circle up on top. I am going to draw a line from that circle, which goes straight down through the bullseye of the bicep right here. And that looks pretty straight according to my grid line. Have a line straight there. Now at this cross point of the bicep bull's eye. Um, you know what, I'm going to actually move it up a little bit because I want this line to be about five eighths of an inch down from the cut line on the top. Okay. All right, let me go ahead and cut off the sides here for the size that I'm going to do. Now you might be saying, well, why don't you just cut out the larger size sleeve? Well, that is because um, I, these sleeves are going to be fitted. I need to make sure that they fit very well. And if I just cut out the larger size, there's going to be a lot of finagling that has to happen to make it fit into the armhole for the bodice. If I was to just take it from this point and go straight down, I could do that, but that only increases the point where the bicep is, you know, by that much. And so that's not going to be really helpful. So by doing it this way, I think I'll be able to have my extra width at the bicep and have this cut edge fit into my, my uh, bodice armhole. So I'm going to cut this all the way up to this dot, okay, leaving the top attached. And on the sides, I'm going to cut across to about 5 eighths of an inch from my cut edge right there. Okay, I'm going to do that over here too. Okay, I got a little scrap of tissue paper here that I'm just going to put down underneath and get everything centered up here on top. Okay, so what I'm thinking is I'm going to bump this part out two inches, but I don't want my bottom to be that wide. So if this is out two inches at this point, 
you can see this puts it like really flared at the bottom. I don't want that. And actually, you know what? I'm going to bump this out two and a half inches. Feeling cute. Okay. So now I'm going to lift the bottom pieces on top and bring them in. And I'm adding one inch to the bottom. So up here at the very top, I've got all of this centered. Can you see? I've got all of this centered at this point up here on my top. Okay, let me move this weight there as you can see. So if the center of this point right here lines up with the top, I need to put There, that's a good, I'm, and I want to increase it by two and a half inches. That means I need to put this on top of my ruler so I can move it easier. Okay, so now I can move it easier. So I'm lining up my ruler with this center point. I'm going to put this corner an inch and a quarter. That's one inch, that's about an inch and a quarter right there. Okay, I'm gonna put this weight down here. And I'm talking about one and a quarter inches. Oops, it moved. Okay, right there. Okay, so the point on here is pointing at a place that is an inch and a quarter from this center mark. I'm gonna go ahead and move this other one. So it is also in pointing at the inch and a quarter mark and put a weight over here. Okay, so those are where I want them. Now down here at the bottom. Again, with this point here as the center point, and I want to add one inch. So that means adding a half an inch on each side of that. I'm going to go ahead and Keeping this somewhat flat up here, bring these in. Let me start putting some tape down here because it's getting a little flaky. Okay, so this side is tacked in place and so I'm going to bring this side over. So this corner here is in line with this mark that I drew here. Okay, put that down. Now, let me go ahead and tape this up here real quick. Okay, now this bottom is not flat. I need this bottom to be flat. So what I'm going to do, um, it's not going to be perfect, but it'll be good enough for when I'm cutting out. I'm just going to put my ruler at this point where it's at the bottom corner here, bottom corner here. I see where it's crossing my little scrap of tissue paper there. I'm just going to draw a line there. So when I go to cut this out, I know I'll start here, follow through at this point, and then end at that point. You know, there just won't be anything right at the edge. Okay, so this is going to be my new sleeve piece. It's a lot shorter. But like I said, I looked it up and there are some very cute, expensive, modern Chanel jackets with this length sleeve. So I think we're going to be okay. So now let me see if I can go ahead and get these three pieces cut out of my fabric. Once I have them cut out, then I'll see where I can place my little pocket piece to make it work. But these, these three pieces are my main concern to start with. Holy cow, did you hear me? I completely forgot already that I was going to do a quick mock-up of this. So, and this is going to be a, a real quick mock-up. This isn't going to be a finished jacket. It's just so that I can see that everything is going to fit together. So I'll spare you the agony of having you watch me make that because you're going to watch me make the real thing in just a couple minutes. So this is my little markup. I only put one sleeve on. I didn't get a good enough idea how it's going to lay there. And I think I'm happy with it. This is not going to be buttoned up the front, but as you can see, the way that this is laying, 
the buttons from the dress underneath it are going to show through. So I think that's going to be decorative enough once I put all the trim on. I'm happy with the height and shape of this neckline. I think that's good. And I think the shoulder and sleeve placement is pretty good too. The only thing I can see is that it might be a little bit loose here, but honestly, that'll just make it easier to move. So I'm good with this. I am ready to go ahead and get started cutting out my real fabric. Okay, so I have my main pieces cut out over there and I went ahead and I surged around the very outside edge just because this stuff wants to fray very, very easily. You know, we want to stop that from happening. But one of the first things you need to do when you're working on a project like this is to figure out your trim because the first thing you're going to make is your pocket and the trim is an integral part of the pocket. So I want to show you what I'm going to do. I have saved all of the selvage edge that I could from my fabric as I was cutting it out. And so here's a sample. And then I have this trim that I actually bought for a different jacket a couple years ago and I didn't use it. And I'm short about a yard, but I just checked that my local Joanne still has it in stock so I can buy a little more. But I'm going to use this along with the selvage edge. So it's going to end up looking like this at the edge of my pocket and things. There's also, if I have extra, I can put the fringe on both sides, you know, which is lovely. And I might do that on the pocket, but not the front. I haven't decided that yet. Um, the one thing with this is that it is, you know, fairly thick and when I'm before my other jackets I made my own trim by like braiding things together and things but because I use the neckline of this jacket I have the template from that that I can use to kind of get an idea of how this will work so what I'm going to be doing is just putting it on by hand after the fact so I will be able to just kind of hmm, stitch at a time, I guess you might say, mold the curves into it. So it'll work out. Um, it's just going to be a little bit tricky stitching this in, but I'll just take my time with a needle and thread and that will be fine. So that's the trim I'm going to be using. So with that, I'm going to put a lot of this aside because I need to get my pocket out and get started making those up. Okay, so here is the process I'm going to be following. Um, the first thing is I've got my two squares that will become pockets here. And I don't know if you can tell, basically I have um, a grid of gold, white, gold, and white white, you know, two opposite ones so that hopefully I can place them so that they're kind of symmetrical looking at each other, one on each side. Um, more, more like this where it's just one pocket on each side than this one where there's four. Okay, I'm going to go more for that. And for my trim, I'm going to be placing my big piece so that just the fringes of my selvages underneath are visible. So what I need to do is get an idea of the total length I'm going to need. And this trim has these big old pearls. What I'm going to need to do is um, clip some of those pearls out when I'm actually stitching this, but I will show you that later. Uh, the main thing right now, I need to make two sections of trim that are the appropriate length. So this looks like a good one here. And that is six inches long. So I'm going to need to cut out all of the stuff to make another one. I'm just going to try to clip this straight across here and here. And then I need to get um, some little pliers to open up that link of chain and separate that. Okay, so I am going to assemble these over here so that I can just apply one big in unit piece over there. And I'm going to use Stitch Witchery, my favorite friend. Um, I'm going to rip this into pieces that are six inches long. I'm going to need two of these for each pocket. So the first thing I'm going to do is put my little piece of stitch witchery on top 
of just the selvage part and I want all of the little hairs, you know, to stick out. Put this on top of it. Actually, I need to flip it over this way because I can only iron it from the back side, I believe. I think that these little pearls aren't going to be really good for ironing, but you know what? We're going to give it a shot. We're going to give it a shot. I'm going to try to iron it from the top. If it doesn't work, I'll turn it over. This way I can just at least get it started. Ooh, that's hot. Well, I think that was enough to tack it in place. Now I can flip it over, iron it one more time with, as you can see in the camera, plenty of steam. Sorry about that. And I think the stitch witchery is going to hold that in place. I am going to be stitching this, but this does a really good job just to hold it well while I'm getting everything settled. So now I have this side and again, put my little stitch witchery just on top of that selvagey part because I want the fringes to show. Place my trim next to it. Hit it with some steam. Just to tack it and then I can flip it over. Okay. Actually, see how this little end came out a bit? I'm gonna pull that off while I'm here. Move it over, repositioning it. And I'll just rip off another little piece and fix that. But this is what my trim is going to look like. I think it's fabulous. I'm going to go ahead and get the other one made up. Okay, so making these pockets, I need to decide how big it's going to be. And I am just arbitrarily deciding that halfway between this gold thread and this gold thread is where my fold line is going to be. Okay, and because of that, I am going to use this gold line here, which has a corresponding side over here. I'm going to use this as a place to line up the top edge here of my trim. So I'm just going to pop that on here and over here. And I'm going to get a little needle and thread and start doing some work. The first thing I'm going to do is get a cream colored thread and just by hand put some stitches all the way along both sides of my trim to secure it to my pocket piece. I'm going to do that first just to make sure that it's going to stay nice and still as I hand stitch it. I am using a piece of stitch witchery one more time down there and that way I can iron this onto my pocket fabric without any pins grabbing me and it'll be a whole lot easier to go ahead and hand stitch that on. Okay, so now that will be fairly secure. So what I am doing is, see if I can do this without my little thimble, I'm just doing like a tiny little prick kind of back stitch Take a little one just at the very edge there, come up maybe a little more than an eighth of an inch away and go back down. And I'm just doing that all the way across, but by having it fused on already, it makes it a lot easier just to pick up and hold while I'm working on this part of it. Okay, so I've got my pocket on this one just stitched on just straight across there and I need to turn this pocket into this. Um, it's not finished. I still need to add the lining to it but what I did is once I got to this phase I clipped off the pearls and the little chain links on the outer half inch or so because you know you have to in order to keep this somewhat thin and then um, starting at the sides, I turned them in with a little stitch witchery. I pressed these hems down. Okay. The, in the instructions here, they're going to have you basting everything. Honestly, stitch witchery just does it so much easier and it looks exactly the same when you're done. 
Once I had the sides turned in, I turned up the bottom hem and then the top one. The top one's a little bit bigger, okay? So once I had that turned under, then I came back up here and folded over the little raggedy edge from where I trimmed a couple pearls and a link of chain off and just whip stitched that under. And all of that's gonna get covered because I'm gonna be putting a square of lining in the back. So let me go ahead and get this pocket um, all stitched up so it looks basically like this one. And then we will go ahead and get the lining set up. Okay. So I've got them both ready and I cut a square of lining slightly larger than the size of my pocket here and just put a couple pins to hold it in place. Did that for both of them. What I'm going to do again with a needle and thread is I just go by hand and you know what I'm going to start on this side. Nope, I need to start at the top. Let me move this pin down just a hair to make it easier. I'm going to fold my lining under so that the edge of my lining is slightly higher than where this little folded flap ended. Okay. And let me pin this in place. And basically I, I whip stitch invisibly however you want to across this edge. When I get up to this point, take a second, fold this in underneath so it's just set in a little bit. Again, whip stitch that and come back down here so that by the time I'm done, I have a little square of lining invisibly stitched on the outside, whip stitched on the inside to my little pocket piece. Morning, good morning. Welcome to the next day. So I want to show you, these are my little pockets. I just sat on the sofa with a Hitchcock on the TV last night and got all these made. So you can see I have my lining stitched around there. So they are ready to go. I'm just going to set them aside. And right now I'm going to get started with the process of quilting because that is one of the hallmarks of a Chanel jacket. And it's not like we're going for Chanel. We're going for Chanel-ish, you know. But what I need is a piece of lining fabric, which as you can tell is not in any way cut out to match my garment outline right now. And I'm going to be doing one at a time. So this will, this is a, a front piece. This is another front piece, which I'm going to set aside. Now, I have a very obvious uh, woven pattern here with all of these plaids. So I am going to focus my quilting along the lines of these plaids. And there's a couple guidelines. First, I don't want my quilting to go lower than three inches from the bottom. So I'm going to just mark where that point is really quick here with a couple pins. So that's where this line is coming across. And that is because I'm going to have a two inch hem uh, that is interfaced and I need to make sure I have enough room to move around. So. If I'm going to start it at the bottom, I also want to leave myself at least two inches from any top edge. So let me get some more pins and just roughly outline where that two inch mark is up here and up here at the shoulder is about here. And up here around the neckline is about here. It's, you know, doesn't have to be exact. So this part inside of those pins, you know, and I'm not going close to the edge because I'm going to have seams and trim and everything there. So my first quilting line will probably be along this point here. All right. And I am going to actually thread mark this and the way that I'm going to be doing it is um, with some diagonal. You know what? I don't want to use this color thread because just in case it gets snagged, I don't want any of that showing here. Uh, so I'm going to use pink. 
it's light enough that I think I can see it, but if there's a little residual hair from this thread, it's not going to be the end of the world. So the way I'm going to mark it, and I'm going to be basting it roughly in place, and uh, get my needle threaded here. I'm just going to tie a knot at the bottom, and this is going to go pretty fast. So what I'm going to do is start down here, because again I'm going along this line. I'm going to start down here where these pins are, and I'm going across that line that I'm going to be stitching. Let's see if I can do this on camera. It's always interesting having this angle. So I went under it, now I'm coming back over at a diagonal, going up maybe an inch or so. So I'm starting at about a quarter inch on one side of that point, coming up about a quarter inch on the other side of that point. What this is going to do is just keep the fabric and the lining matched up at that point. It'll help me to remember exactly where I'm supposed to be stitching. And it'll be easy to pull out afterwards. And I know you probably cannot see my little pink threads here. Let me see. Can you even see it there? They're coming across like here is one, here is one. But it's enough for me that I can see it when I'm at my sewing machine. So I'm going to be doing this along this line up to this point because that's where that pin is. Then coming over to the next grid up here to this point. Going over one more up here to probably this point. Okay. Um, I'm probably not going to do any more over here. If I do, it'll be just be this one. I want to make, yeah, I'll do this one. So from this point to here, I want to make sure I have plenty of non-connected space on all of the sides and just quilting in the middle. So let me get this basted and then I'll show you how I'm going to work it on the machine. Okay, so I have this piece basted together and you can probably see a little bit better on the back. I got the little cross hatches where all my basting marks went across. Okay, now with a matching thread over on, I'm using Yolanda the Faf again today, um, I'm going to quilt this and I'm always starting and one direction and going in the other direction. And just for simplicity, I've decided that I am always going to start at the bottom and travel upwards, okay, on this piece and all the other pieces, just to keep things uniform. So what I'm going to do just to make my life a little bit easier is at the bottom of each one of my rows, I'm going to stick a little pin just so it's easier for me to find that spot while I'm moving things around at the sewing machine. And then because my fabric has such a uh, very defined but loose and open weave, I am just going to, when I get over there, pick one, one piece of thread or ribbon or whatever, like on here would be this side of this little what is that? It looks like net almost. And I'm just going to use that as my guide and go straight up all the way up. Okay. I'm over here at my sewing machine. I did the first row. I'll show you after this, but I wanted to show you why I don't cut around the edges until later. When you're quilting, it tends to want to pucker up a bit. Now when I iron this, a lot of this is going to smooth out, but not all of it. And that's okay because I have so much extra room at the top and the bottom, it can absorb that shrinkage, you know? But if you cut your lining out exactly the right size and then do this, it can be very difficult because everything's going to shrink up on you. So what I do is um, I'm going to start, I did, the, I did one of the center ones first, okay? And then from the center one, I'm going to start working out. So. I know you cannot see because it's white on white, but I did one right here. So I'm going to go ahead and show you one the next place over. So one of the first thing is I am not back stitching. Um, I'll show you how I tie them off later, but I'm not back stitching. I'm just going to get started. And I'm careful to make sure that my machine is stitching right in the path that I want. So I'm going to go fairly slow here 
and just keeping my fabric nice and taut all the way. All right, so I am at that point about two inches in. And again, not back stitching. I'm just going to pull it off here. Give myself plenty of room in the back. Uh, with plenty of thread so that I can tie it off. So let's look at the back here now. So now you can see my second row of stitching. This is the one I just did. Now to tie it off, what I'm going to do is tug on the thread that's exposed and it should bring up a little loop that has the needle thread exposed and so I can just stick a pin through there and hopefully hopefully pull it up. Okay so now I have both my bobbin and needle thread coming out. So to tie it off I make a big loop stick my point of my pin at the through the loop and at the last of the stitching stitches and just pull it nice and tight and that's going to make a little a little knot right at the end of my stitching and then I clip it maybe a quarter inch or so away from that point okay so that's how I'm going to tie off all of these I'm going to go ahead and make my other two quilting uh, lines on this side front and then I'm going to do the other one exactly the same way Okay, so I got my first one done and put aside for now. And I have to tell you, I'm, I'm not a fan of busy work that's not really necessary. And when I was, you know, plucking out all of my basting stitches, I was thinking there has got to be a better way. So what I've decided to do on this one to see how it works is instead of, because the basting stitches just basically go across you know, periodically. I am just going to use my big old flower head pens and um, put them at the same points, basically, that I would be, well, I don't think I have enough flower heads here, um, but I'll use pens every two inches, let's say, up each one of these four rows. And I think that that's going to hold it equally as well. So I'm just going to, as I sew, I'll pull out a pen as I sew. And I think that'll be good. And then when I get to the end, I won't have to sit here, you know, for another 10 minutes and pluck out little pink threads. So let me give it a shot this way. I'll let you know how it goes. They're all pinned up. And what I wanted to point out is my little code for while I'm stitching so I don't go too far is I put my top pin at the point where I want to end my row. And I put it the opposite way. So here all the, the heads are this way. I'm going to have to pull the top one the other direction. And that should trigger my mind to stop sewing here. Okay, I think I'm going to use that technique. It seems to work fine. This is my piece from the front. This is my piece from the back. You know, I think it looks fine. Um, and with the idea of, well, if you don't like busy work, why don't you just backstitch? And my, my thought is that the reason that they want you not to backstitch is because, at least this is my opinion here, um, there's always a chance that one of these rows of quilting might be a little bit tight, a little bit too bound up or something when you're making them. And if there's not a back stitch, there's a little bit of wiggle room to kind of like pull it out, you know, spread it out and everything so that that row of stitching can go ahead and lay flat. And you can do that, the ironing board and everything, getting your threads all released and everything like that. But if you backstitch them all, they're locked in in that position, you know. So that's my opinion. I don't like busy work, but for something like this, taking the extra couple minutes to hand tie my, um, my quilting threads once I, have, once I am satisfied that the quilting is fine, that's good for me. So... With that, after I'm done with this one, I'm going to do the same process for the back. And the back is just, you know, twice this size. So it's going to be the same thing, layering my tweed with my 
lining, which is the Bimber Grand that I used on my dress, and strategizing where I'm going to be putting my quilting lines the same way, you know, making sure I have three inches clear on the bottom, at least two inches from each side, and pinning them, quilting them that way and everything. So when you see me next time, um, I'm going to have my fronts and my backs all quilted up. And I am not actually cutting my lining even after I have it quilted yet. I'll do that later on. Okay, so let me tell you where I am now. I have trimmed my lining around my pieces, leaving a gap of about an inch or so sticking out. Okay, I'll deal with all of that later. Um, I'm putting my pockets on. I'm trying to find a place where they match the plaid behind it and they're symmetrical and things like that. So I've just pinned them on. I am going to stitch them on with a needle and thread, probably little back stitches around the edges. Okay, I have my pockets sewn on here. And yes, I did go all the way through. I just decided that's a lot more secure. So you can see the back of my stitches, but that's okay. It's handmade, you know, it's okay. People pay extra for that. Anyhow, what I'm going to do is take a step aside from the Claire method because um, her process, you know I'm skipping many, many steps here, but her process is to put the side seams together and then do the shoulder ones one of the last steps. But when I was making my other jackets, it seemed like it was a whole lot easier to do the shoulders first because there's going to be a whole lot of work with this trim that goes around the neckline and then angles down. And doing this work on a garment that you can lay flat is a whole lot easier than doing it on a three-dimensional garment that you have to really manipulate. So, you know, going to step aside and do it this way. So the first thing I'm going to do up here is just match up only this fabric. I'm getting my lining pulled down, which is why I didn't quilt all the way to the top. Okay, and I'm going to sew both of my shoulder seams at 5 8 7 inch and then press the seam allowance open. Okay, so I have my seam sewn, pressed open, and what I'm going to do is go ahead and finish off my shoulder seam lining at this point. So the way I'm going to do it is, um, first of all, I don't know if you can see. I can see underneath here where that point that my seam allowance is end. You know, just to make sure this does not want to move, I'm going to put a little pin there. I am going to trim the top edge of my lining so that it's pretty much, it's hard to do it from this angle for the camera, but so it's pretty much equal with that seam allowance there, okay? Folds that one down and I'm going to do the same thing with this front piece here. Are there other ways to do this? Absolutely. This is just the way I am choosing to go about it right now. Okay. All right. So now I have both of these pieces basically at the right size. Um, what I'm going to do is this is my front piece. That's my back piece. I'm going to take my back, have my front in nice and flat. And I'm going to fold my back lining under about 5 8 7 inch and just kind of line it up with where that seam line is here all the way across. I can kind of see it through my lining there. And then I'm going to hand stitch it um, straight across here. I'm only going to be stitching it from the point where the fabric is. I'm not going all the way to the outside edge of the lining. Just from this point here to this point there. You know, little, little whip stitches all the way across on both of my shoulders. And I wanted to show you that while I'm stitching this, I am going beyond my lining and I'm actually anchoring these stitches to the linen fabric underneath. Um, because I want this to stay secure. I don't want this 
linen, I mean the lining part to just kind of float away separately. So just thought I would point that out as I continue to just kind of stitch along in this method all the way across. All right, so I got that done and I need to point out, um, this is literally the fast track way to get a relatively Chanel-ish inspired jacket, okay? It is in no way following everything here because this took me weeks to do. If anyone out there has been working along with these, I know there's some people that follow me that have done these and they take a long time because there are a million steps. I am omitting a whole bunch of stays, a whole bunch of stay tapes, a whole bunch of all kinds of things. and. Um, but I think it's going to be fine. I think that this is going to work out well, but uh, I just wanted to point that out. Now, what I want to do, I cannot do. What I want to do is to jump ahead and start putting the trim and the uh, edge finishing on here, but I don't have enough of this. And um, they do at my local Joanne store, which is an hour and a half from here. And I have to go into town tomorrow to pick up some other stuff at an office near there. So I don't want to make that drive two days in a row, you know. So I'm going to hold off doing that for right now. Put this piece aside and go ahead and get my sleeves down here because I'm going to have to go through the process of quilting my sleeves just like I did uh, with these. Also, okay, so before I totally take my sleeve off here, I have a pin marked on the side that is the back because I'm going to need to remove that um, while I'm quilting. I'm just going to make a little thread mark with a little, little cross hatch kind of deal with a red thread on both of my back side corners so I can tell what is front and what is back. Okay, so I have one of my back pieces here and I want to make sure, you know, I've done this on my other ones, that my lining is on grain. So what I do is I just tug it at the top and the bottom where it feels really secure. If I'm not perfectly on grain and I give a tug, it's gonna, it's gonna give a little bit, you know? It's gonna stretch a little bit and I don't want that. So I just kind of keep tugging till I find where that grain line is. Um, and I wanna make sure that that gets matched up correctly on grain with my fabric here. So I'm gonna do basically the same thing where I leave three inches on the bottom with no quilting, two inches on the sides with no quilting, and two inches on the top with no quilting and pretty much make my quilting lines follow along with the pattern on my, on my fabric. Um, honestly, even when I've read in the books and looked up things, the quilting's all over the place. It is up to you how you want to quilt. You could do it narrower, farther apart, just a couple, a whole bunch of them. That is up to you. So I'm just choosing to go along with the, uh, outline on my, my fabric. I think that's going to work well. So you've seen the process before. I'm going to go ahead, you know, put my pins in, quilt up and down, tie off the threads in the back here. And when I'm done, I am going to trim my lining about one inch all the way around. But I will iron this first and make sure that all the threads are set correctly before I do that. Okay, so I've got my sleeve quilted, tied off and everything, and I am actually going to attach my sleeves to my bodice so I can lay the whole thing flat. And when I made my mock-up for this pattern, um, I was able to see how it fits. And even though this is fairly sloped, so you know it looks like there should be a big sleeve cap up there, it didn't set in like there was an extreme amount of ease that needed to come out of it. So let me tell you what I'm going to do. I am going to, it doesn't, now the pattern itself, because it's made for a stretch knit, you know, it doesn't incorporate it. It only has a center dot on the top and then some notches. And the notches basically are where this slope is starting to really head north. Um, I'm going to 
with this part, you know, is still somewhat separate. I'm going to go over to my sewing machine and just run one row of gathering stitches fairly close to where my surged edge is, just from about here to here, kind of where my notches would be. I didn't clip them because, you know, fraying is an issue here. And I'm going to do that on both of my sleeves before I try to pin it onto my bodice. Okay, so I ran just that one row of stitching. You can see I wasn't really focused on stretching it out as I sewed it, so I let it ease in as it went. And I'm just gonna leave that. It's kind of like self-forming a little sleeve cap there. And that's fine. I'm just gonna let that set for a bit because before I actually sew it on, I'm gonna work on the trim that's gonna go onto these sleeves. Now the way that ultimately I'm going to be hemming these is that this fabulous fabric is going to get turned under by about one inch. I'm just arbitrarily choosing one inch and then I will fold under the lining and I will stitch it together. Okay, But I'm not going to do that until I have my sleeve, my center, this sleeve um, seam sewed. But I want to get my uh, trim put onto the bottom of these first. So the trim is just going to be going all the way around. I am not going to mess with the little vent opening at this point because there is none. And honestly, even on those jackets, the vent opening does not open. It's a farce, I tell you. So we're just going to make a straight band across with the same decoration that I have on my pockets. So what I need to do is figure out the width of my design. It says about 13 and a half inches. We're going to go at least 14 and a half so I have a little wiggle room on the sides. And at this point, I believe I have enough of this trim to do that. I definitely do. So I can get started. I need to get a couple pieces of the selvage trim and do the same thing that I did for the pockets where I take the two selvages, stitch witchery it to this, you know, and then when I'm going to apply it, then I'll stitch it all down at once. So let me get this cut and I will be right back. Now looking at my selvage edges here, I am not going to have enough to do both sides of the trim, like on my little pocket here, I ran it on both sides. I only going to have enough to do it on one side, which is okay. That will be fine. So I am just going to choose to put the fringy side um, down at the bottom edge, okay? So here I have my shorter little pieces. I'm going to need that for a different one. I'm going to cut one piece of my selvage for each of them and then just fuse that one piece onto the edge like that. All right, so I've got my little strips made up here, just fused on, okay? What I am thinking is that um, my hem's going to be one inch, which is going to be basically right here, okay? I want to know where one and a quarter inches, I'm going to give myself a quarter inch, um, is going to line up to because that is where I'm going to place this, the bottom edge of this piece. And I have not been very successful using the heat erasable pin on this fabric because it's so open. I do know it erases completely when I iron it though. So now I have a very light line going across there and I am just going to lightly put my little trim piece on so that this edge is lined up with that point that I just drew on there. And I could make it however I want. It's trim. You could do what you want to. I could put it up here if I wanted to. Um, I think that that looks actually pretty uniform right now. So what I'm going to do is just pen it in place a few spots and just like I did with my pockets, come back with a needle and thread and just hand stitch it 
all the way across both of the outside edges of of this little part in here. I want my little fringes to be free. And my goal is that when my finished edge is here, that the little fringes are, are visible on the edge of the fabric, okay? So that's what it's ultimately, I want it to look like. But for right now, I am just gonna stitch it like this, going all the way through this fabric and the lining fabric. Okay, I want to show you something that I did not think about before. I have the top row sewn on so it's loose here like that. Um, first of all, I caught myself and I did not attach it to the lining for like at least an inch and a half at the edges so that I can make that seam and close up the lining separately. But um, and on here you can see this sleeve. This is a different one than I think that I was showing before. The bottom edge, I did not cut it exact. And everything else is on grid, so I'm going to end up, you know, shaving off this little quadrant here just so that this will line up on my plaid. But with the top and the bottom of this stitched on, I cannot make a one inch hem just folding it up but I can make about a half inch hem. So I think that's going to be okay because if this line is stitched here and I'm folding this side in, that's what it's going to look like. Now I can trim this more. Like if this was only half of an inch deep, say that was the cut edge to start with, and I folded that in half, I could make that work. So I'm going to play with it and see what look I want. If I'm okay with having the fabric underneath the fringe like this, that's one option. If I want the fringe to be the edge without fabric under it, which is more dramatic, that's the other option. So I'm just going to play with that for a little bit. Okay. Well, it's been some time actually because my battery for my microphone died so while it was charging when one of the things I did is I replaced all of the buttons on the dress with these and I did that because I think that these buttons with the pearl and gold and sparkle and everything will go a lot better with this trim than the other ones I had which were you know oh do I even still have them here it was, they were big, they were off white, kind of a cream color. They were pretty, they were very pretty, but, um, ooh, this one's cracked. But they wouldn't go with this trim. So now that they are replaced, I'm feeling a lot better with that. Also, while my camera batteries were charging, I put one of the sleeves on. So I'm gonna walk you step by step on putting the other sleeve on. Um, but I am very pleased with the way that this is turning out, I must say. I've done the sleeves the proper way, and I can tell you that this is so much easier this way than the way that the pattern calls for it. Now, this is not a proper set in the sleeve because this is open on the bottom, but I don't think anyone's going to care once it's finished. So, let me go ahead and start the process of this side here. Now one thing is um, earlier when I was closing this up I stitched my lining and my shoulder all the way from this edge to this edge. I should not have done that. I should have given myself at least an inch of fabric here that would be loose um, of the lining. So what I'm going to do is actually pick out these outside stitches up to about an inch in, okay? And uh, put little knots there so it won't come loose. And then I'll be ready to go ahead and put the sleeve into it. So let me get that fixed first. Okay, so here is my sleeve opening. This part is loose now, just about an inch in. And I'm gonna go ahead and get my sleeve piece. I wanna put them right sides together. I have a little pin up here marking my center top. I'm going to match that up with the shoulder seam point right here. 
get that pinned and if you remember when I put my little row of gathering stitches in it kind of cinched it in a little bit at the top to form a sleeve cap I am just going to let that do what it did um, and not try to stretch it out come down here match up the bottom edge you can tell I have my little red X here which I can pull out now which was indicating um, which side was the back and obviously I have it matched up on the correct side now so that's all good thank you for your service all right I've got some threads here from those gathering stitches I'm going to go ahead and clip out because they've done their job Alrighty, so now up here you can see where there's a little bit of a gather there it should be just enough to take any slack from the very far edge of that seam allowance so it'll set in like this okay this is the bodice part I got the sleeve underneath it here all right so let me go ahead and make some more pins set some more pins here when I have it all pinned together this side will go exactly like this side I'm going to go to my machine and sew it at a 5 8 inch seam allowance you know from one side to the other and trying to be careful to not catch any of the lining in my stitches I want to to keep all of the lining you know just flopped out of the way while I'm sewing this okay so I've got it sewed on here all right and I need to set this so that the seam allowance is going to go towards the sleeve all right I'm not pressing it right now I'm just kind of pushing it over there I have one of my pressing hams here love my pressing hams um, I do have an old video on making these way back um, my design has a flat bottom which I love because I can just set it up right on my table like this because this is going to come in handy a lot of the other ones you have to put it on a stand or something but mine has a little flat bottom so you know it's just a little sawdust pressing ham but it works well so over this pressing ham what I'm going to be doing is placing my shoulder okay here's my shoulder I'm going to put it kind of up on top here's my sleeve I'm just gonna let my sleeve part stay out of the way for a while because I need to work on this part of the lining now and what I have found the easiest thing is just to go around and pin it to the seam allowance so I'm just kind of smoothing the bodice lining so that you know here's my quilting just kind of smoothing it over and pinning it in that seam allowance all the way down when I get down here where the sleeve is a little bit lower again I'm just trying to open it up all I can so I can just pin this to the seam allowance all the way down here and then on the other side also okay let me get that pinned first once I get it pinned I'm going to come back with a needle and thread you know I can open it up and everything at this point and just baste this on I can see the seam allowance through my my lining here um, but this is a 5 8 inch seam allowance I'll be basting it probably about halfway through so about at a quarter inch in all the way across here okay and I think I forgot to mention when basting this again it's important to leave the edge of the lining for a couple inches free okay so I have it basted and then once I had it basted I went ahead and trimmed the lining so it was equal in length to the edges of that seam allowance okay so now I need to get my ham over here again and set it upright it's kind of pretending it's a shoulder a really wide shoulder so now making sure that my seam allowance you know that this is open there's no buckles or puckers or anything going on in here um, the seam allowance is going towards the sleeve I'm going to lift the sleeve lining up and feeling where that whole seam allowance is come around and pin it 
you know, doing the same thing where I'm just kind of smoothing this sleeve lining up here, making sure that it's laying nice and smooth and just pinning it on top of the seam allowance bump. You know, it's pretty easy to feel it all the way around the sleeve. Okay, so now I have it pinned on all the way around. And so at this point, I am going to trim off some of the excess floppiness of this. I want to give myself one inch from the point of where my pins are to out here. So this part down here, I'm not going to trim anything off, but especially up here near the top where it seems like I have extra lining going on. I'm just going to trim that down because it'll make it a lot easier for the next step. It doesn't have to be perfect. I just don't want it too wide because that could cause trouble. Okay, so now that that is trimmed, I'm going to start at the top here and take off a pin, turn the edge of my lining underneath and pin it back down so that it just covers that seam allowance so that the ed my fold edge here is basically on top of the stitching line or thereabouts from when I sewed the um, sleeve to the bodice. So here I'm just going to fold that under and pin it and then where I have this little puckery bit sticking out just going to tuck that in and put another little pin here. Okay. And then I'm just going to continue that all the way down to the very bottom of my sleeve opening. Okay, so that I have it pinned all the way across. Okay, now I'm going to show you on the one that I already did here. The way I'm going to stitch it is just by little, by hand stitches, just grabbing a little thread all the way around. Um, but again, I want to leave a couple inches open at the very bottom here. So here is my fashion fabric with the seam I sewed on the machine. These lining, this is the front lining and the back lining, just stopping the stitching at that point because I'm going to need to have those open uh, when I do my side seams. Hello and welcome to another day. Um, I just got back from town and while I was there I picked up, you know, this is just a little decorative chain, but I think it's pretty. It's not too heavy, you know, um, but it's lovely and it kind of matches this gold. And I'm going to use it for my bottom hem weight chain. But before I even get close to doing that, I did pick up the more of my trim that I need to go around this whole front and neckline. So I'm going to be working on that right now. Um, but before I can get started putting that on, my process is going to be a little unorthodox, I must admit. But I'm going to be folding my edges under by about 5 8 7 inch, pressing it with stitch witchery so it's going to be held in place, folded under at 5 8 7 inch, okay? Then I'm going to put the trim on before I add the lining and stitch it. But this front is on a straight, so that'll be easy to do. But around the neckline, that could be a little trickier. So before I get started with that, I'm going to run a row of stitching in matching thread at 5 8 7 inch all the way around this neckline uh, just to keep it properly shaped and so that I can make some clips to fold under uh, without it distorting this neckline. So let me go ahead and put that in really quick. I finished that and once again I am only stitching through the tweed, not the lining, keeping that free. So around this neckline now, I don't even know if you can see, but I have a row of stitching going right here. What I'm going to do is very carefully, because it's even hard for me to see, Take little clips like every inch or so and I'm clipping up to about an eighth of an inch away from that stitching line. I don't want to go all the way up to it, especially with this fabric that wants to fray so much. 
So now that I have that done, what I'm going to do is just press it first without the stitch witchery. Um, because I can only do a little bit at a time. I've got my ham underneath here. This lining part is also going to need to get trimmed. As you can see, it's sticking out much further than this is, and it's kind of in my way. Um, I'm going to need my lining to be about the right, the same size as this. So you know what, just to make my life easier right now, before, I make all of those folds. I'm going to go ahead and smooth this lining back down here. Okay, and now that I can see it clearly, I'm going to trim my neck lining to the same length as my tweed. Okay, so I'm going to trim it down here, you know, the full circle. And I'm going to go ahead and make a few little clips, probably about a half inch deep you know, around this neckline and the lining also. That will make my life easier, so give me just a few minutes. Okay, so at this point I have my lining trimmed and notched over, so I can move it around a little bit. I've got the first pressing of my little clipped neckline here, and now I'm gonna come back around with little pieces of stitch witchery and just tuck them in underneath and give it another press so that it will stay where I want it to stay while I'm working on the next step. So first I'm gonna go all the way around the neckline like that. Once I got that done, what I'm doing is going ahead and ironing my lining because I really, really distorted it there for a little bit while I was working on this because I want it to be, you know, somewhat back in its original shape because I'm going to need to make it pretty on the inside when I'm done with all of this. Okay, let me flip this over to the right side here. And this is what my neckline, whoops, this is what my neckline looks like now, okay? Which is a nice shape. I'm really happy with that. Uh, what I need to do though is the front sides. So, just like the neckline, I'm going to fold this in at about 5 eighths of an inch and press it down first and then come back with stitch witchery and fuse it down. Now, if you were following Claire's pattern, um, this one, in this pattern in the directions when you're closing up a corner like up here where there's a couple layers coming together. She has you do this thing where you cut a triangle notch out of the seam allowance and kind of butt it together and fold it so you have this little miter shape instead of just a regular fold, which you can do. Um, but my fabric is lightweight enough that I think that, you know, just double folding it is fine. You know, it'll give it some body up there at the top. So I'm just making it nice and normal like that. All right, so for my trim, I'm going to be having my fringe from my selvage edge um, basically peeking out this way, okay, and then having this trim on top. So I'm going to be putting this on first. Um, what I'm going to do is trim it all down so that it's a uniform width, probably about half an inch. And then what I'm going to do is fuse it with, again, Stitch Witchery. It's my friend right now. I'm going to fuse it to the bottom side where I just press the seam allowance under. Okay. From here, I will do a straight strip down. Okay. And another one from here down. And then I'm going to take a third one up here and I'll probably have to make some clips into the selvage so it will flex. And I'm going to fuse it to the inside here and around, okay? Okay, so I've got the little fringes stitch witchery on. I think they look pretty good. The fun thing about this is you can piece it together because it's just, you know, what's sticking out. So I actually have three little pieces here that are joined together, but since you only see the little fringes, that's okay. You know, nobody's gonna know. So I'm going to go ahead and get started placing my trim. And I am going to be placing it so that, hmm, 
probably about a fat eighth of an inch of fabric is showing. I think that that will be good. The hardest part is going to be up here where I need to make this curve. And I'm going to need to trim out several of these little pearls and do some little miter finagling and everything. So um, I think what I'm going to do is actually start in the back because I want to do this in one continuous piece. So if this is center back here, I'm going to move it over another about three inches just to give me a little extra. And pin that right back here. Whee! My pins are always on the opposite side of the table. Okay, so get that pinned here so I know where I can start and just work around. The curve of the neckline, I should be able to mold this to it. You know, I am going to be stitching it on by hand so I can take up a little bit of ease in the center there. That's fine. Just notice something. Look at this. I bought these from two different Joann's at two different times and the chains are different. The chains are very, very different. But you know what? I'm not going to worry about it. We're just going to say it is what it is. Um, I didn't have this with me when I went to the store, so I didn't match it. And I just now looked at it. Oi, oi, oi. So I am in a dilemma here. I just have this trim pinned on. I haven't done a lot to it. Okay, and it's looking beautiful, but this gold is definitely an orange brassy gold. This gold, even on the website, it's called white gold. And here's my problem. Of course, this is already sewn on here and here, so I'm not taking that off. Um, I've checked a few of the Joanne stores around me. All they have in stock is this very brassy gold. I looked online for ways that I can lighten this and the only thing that I've been able to see is that there's a possibility that if I leave this out in the sun that the sun might fade it you know in all of the articles is oh you know keep it from fading I want it to fade so this is what I'm going to do it's not an emergency to get this jacket done really quickly my little pal here um, I'm going to pull this off, take it out in the sunshine, and I'm probably going to leave it in a plastic out in the sun, on a table out in the sunshine, for a couple weeks, just to let it fade as much as possible. You know, I'll, I'll put it in plastic so it won't get dirty or wet or anything, but I want it to fade because that's just, that's not acceptable, and I can't change these right now. So that's my plan. I'm going to do that. I'm just going to set this whole jacket aside. I'll put my dust cover over it and everything. And once I feel like this gold has faded enough or I just give up and I put it on anyway, um, then we'll continue the project. But I think it's coming together pretty well and I think it's going to look really sharp. It's just that brassy gold. I can't handle it. So anyway, we'll just see how it goes. <laughs> Okay, so it's been a little while and the sun didn't work. I tried peroxide. Peroxide didn't work. I tried the white solution that you mix with hair color. That didn't work either. So my last resort is I am going to disassemble this. Um, thankfully, I figured out the trick here so it doesn't come apart that terribly difficult. Um, and I'm going to have to take this chain off, go to the store and try to find a chain that is the right color and about the right width. And I am going to have to stitch these on after I have all of that. After I have my new chain, um, I will put it all back together again just because for something as classy as this was turning out to be, having that yellow gold chain in the middle of everything else just wasn't going to work. So um, I am off to town shortly 
to see if I can find another chain about this length, about this size, but in the white gold color, not this yellow, yellow gold color. So since I am going to have to do all of these extra steps anyway, I think that what I'm gonna go ahead and do right now before I have my chain is um, get the background cloth on here. Now you can kind of see where everything was sewn and you can see that it is somewhat flexible. So that's gonna make it easier in my opinion to mold it around this curve. So I'm just gonna get started, you know, centering this little strip here with my center back. And I'm trying to place it so I have maybe an eighth of an inch from the scallopy looking edge here to the edge of my fabric. And I'm trying not to stretch it. If anything, it's at its regular width on the outside edge. And then I'm going to ease it together here in the inside curve like that. I've got it all pinned on. And you know what? This whole thing might be a blessing in disguise. Because I can tell you, mitering these corners with all the pearls and chains was going to be a nightmare. But this is so much easier. So... You know, it might work out. What I'm going to do is um, hand baste this on. Actually, no, I'm not going to baste it. I'm just going to stitch it on. And that way I can work in all of this little extra ease as I'm stitching it. So it'll lay nice and flat like that. And I'm just going to stitch it along both outside edges um, just to hold it on. So that's going to be my project for a little bit. Once I get that done, then I'll start on the pearls. And I think the last thing will be the chain because I have not purchased the final chain yet. Well, welcome to the next day. Yesterday afternoon, I actually got into town, got farther than I usually do, went into Hobby Lobby. They had a roll of this chain, which matches the old chain very well. And so, last night, I put on a bunch of old 1940s movies, and I just sat there and sewed. And this is what it looks like now. I think it's great. So, what I did, ooh, I need to straighten out this chain right here. Hang on. I will put a couple stitches so that that chain stays nice and straight. Um, but what I did is first I stitched down the backing by hand did a row of pearls, did the chain, and then did another row of pearls. And I think it's, I think that it is good. I like it. So at this point, after I fix that little link, and if you can't see what I'm talking about, the chain is slightly bent. I don't know if anyone else in the world will notice, but I will notice. So I'm just going to put a little stitch so it bumps over. But anyway, what I need to do now is work on sewing up these side seams. So, I take this pin out right here. I'm going to flip it inside out and making sure that my lining is out of the way. Pin these together at the tip here. And like I think I mentioned before, where all of this stuff is, I'm going to have to do that by hand probably up to this point because it's just too thick with all of those pearls and everything there. But then I'm going to match up the underarm seam here, keeping the seam allowances towards the sleeve. I want them that way. Lots of thicknesses there too. And then all the way down here to the bottom. Okay, so I will probably stitch this up here first, up to here, needle and thread, and then do the rest of it with the machine keeping the lining out of the way and do the same thing on the other side. All right, I've got them sewed. So now I need to press these seams open. So I got a little sleeve roll there that I can prop it up on. This is the bodice part here. Get it nicely pressed open, even up here, right underneath the arm. Okay, now for the sleeve, I'm just going to slide my sleeve roll into the sleeve here. Get it 
is plenty wide enough. And then I can open up this seam allowance and press that too. Okay, so now that that is done, what I need to do is start working on, I'm hemming my sleeves. Now, when I was sewing my trim on, what I did is I stitched it at the top. I just fused it with the stitch witchery down here at the bottom. So it's attached just by stitch witchery, but it's open here, okay? That way I still have freedom to move all of my, my lining around. What I'm gonna do is just make a few little clips down here around the bottom edge so that it's gonna flex enough for me to turn everything up. I'm turning it up probably about three quarters of an inch here. I wanna turn it up enough that the little fringes are coming out on the edge like that a similar amount that they are around the front opening and neckline of my jacket. Okay, so it'll look like that. So once I get it all pinned, like this side is, I am going to, well, make sure that my lining can go up further. I may have to trim this just a little bit. I need to get this turned up and held up here securely. And I am going to have to stitch it by hand to hold the lining down at the, the tail end of it. But you know what? I think I am just gonna do one more layer of stitch witchery at this point around here just to hold this folded up. And then when I come back and I stitch everything by hand when I have the lining on, that's gonna do the final securing. So let me go ahead and do that for right now. Okay, so what I have here is one of my sleeves. Um, I'm not dealing with the bodice part yet. And starting at this underarm area, I'm kind of getting my linings where one side is set down underneath, the other side I'm folding over, and I'm pinning it pretty much in the center of where the seam allowances are for the fabric underneath. You know, I can kind of see where that is. I just want to make sure that where I'm stitching is going to be definitely on top of the seam allowances. Um, if I have a few little wrinkles in here, that's okay. No one's ever going to see that. So I'm just coming down here and pinning it. And I am going to, once again, go ahead and whip stitch this down. Kind of like I did up here where the sleeve was joined to the bodice part. And up until maybe where my stitching ends right about here, I would say, what is that? About two inches above the very bottom of my sleeve. I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna leave this part open um, so that when I turn it, I have a little bit of flexibility there. So first thing I'm gonna do is just do both sleeves like this. And again, leaving it open down here. So oh, it has actually been probably a week since I worked on this last and I cannot remember what I said in my last video. So let me just show you where I am right now. I have my sleeve part of my lining finished on this cuff, okay? I have it tucked in and the lining is nicely stitched in and that's great. So let me flip this right side out so you can see it. Now up here, you know, where everything joins, yeah, it might not be perfect, but nobody's going to be looking at your lining of your underarm, so that's okay. So this is what it's looking like on the inside. Now, on this side, I have not finished it, obviously, so I'm thinking that that's what I wanted to show you, hopefully. So as you can see on this side, underneath, it's just matching up and over here, this is going to be one big adventure and just, you know, slip stitching things together. So I am not worrying too much about the bodice area. It's just up here. So I'm just going to flatten out the sleeve and I'm going to work on this seam here before I get to the cuff. Okay, so just choose which side you want to go underneath. Um, and what I need to do is actually trim it just a little bit because it is a little too long. As you can maybe see, when I smooth it out, you can see this is the edge of the seam allowance. And that's kind of where I want it to end up. 
So before I trim it, I am just going to loosely pin this one side of my lining to seam allowances, making sure everything is about even here. Okay, so I can kind of see where that is. And then I'm going to come back up here and just trim it, you know, it's not precise. I just don't want too much extra fabric right there. Okay, so now that that is done, I'm going to take the other side here and flop it underneath and lay it nice and flat here. Okay, and this one is staying a little bit longer. That's okay. That's all right. It's the one that I'm going to be folding on top that it gets a little bit trickier if it's too long. And I am just layering these things here up at this intersection the way that it looks like it should naturally be layered. Okay. All right. Pinning again my bottom layer to the seam allowance first. Now I'm going to layer the top one that I just trimmed and then I can just fold under the edge and I'm pinning it right about on top of where that seam was made, right in between the seam allowances there. And I'm just going to pin it. And, and hopefully it'll all match up well. If it's not exact, again, it's under the arm in the lining. So nobody's going to know. Okay. So anyway, once I get it all pinned this way, then I'm going to come back and starting probably about true like that. What is that? About an inch and a half from the bottom of the cuff here. That's where I'm going to start my stitching and go all the way up to where this little intersection is up here. Okay, so now I have this stitched, so I need to deal with my cuff. And as you can see, I've got a lot more lining here than I need. So once again, I'm going to trim probably about a half inch longer than what my finished cuff is. You can probably see if I do it on this side here. Okay. And that's going to give me enough that I'll be able to turn it under, but I won't have to deal with all of this. So now that it is trimmed, you know, one side is under the other. So I'm going to start turning that one under and I want at this point, all of this is just pressed. I don't have this stitched yet. Okay. So I'm just going to turn this under. So I have about maybe a quarter inch of the regular fabric peeking out. Okay. And pin that in place like this all the way around. And then I'm going to come back and stitch this in place just like I did here. All right, so I've got it stitched in, looks lovely. But one thing I need to do before I leave my cuff is I machine stitched it up here at the top or did I hand stitch it? Either way, this is stitched in at the top, but the bottom, I just used stitch witchery to fuse that on because I needed to be able to have this room to tuck stuff in underneath. Um, I'm not going to leave it just stitch witchery. So I'm going to come back again with my trusty needle and thread and very carefully and invisibly stitch along the bottom edge of this trim piece here, just so it is locked down. So whenever this does go to the cleaners, that's not going to come loose. Alrighty, so for the next step, I need to close up this side seam down here. Now I already did this side. So you can see, basically, I just got everything locked in up here where all of this intersection in the armpit area is. And just like on the arm, but this is actually a whole lot easier than on the arm because it's flat, you know, where I laid one side flat of the lining, the other side I turned under and just made little invisible ish stitches all the way down. And I'm leaving it open a couple inches from the bottom. So I have room to turn up and make my hem down here. Okay. And you can see they're just little stitches, nothing fancy there. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing over on this side. Excited because this is getting towards the tail end here. So first I'm just smoothing everything out, laying this one side underneath, folding 
the other one over and pinning it in place so that I can then come back and make my little stitches um, down to right about here. Okay, I'm going to start working on the hem now and uh, remember when I was putting my trim on the front I stopped um, with the selvagey fringy part and this at about three quarter inch from the bottom. There you can see. So that's about where I am going to be making my fold and I need to go ahead and fold it up and press it all the way across so I have a nice sharp edge here on the bottom and um, actually I'm probably going to put a little bit of stitch witchery under here when I press it just so it'll hold itself in place really well while I'm working on this part here. So now that it is pressed up and I did use the stitch witcher to fuse this on so it won't be coming down while I'm working on the next step. I'm going to start in the center back here um, and once I get, let me raise you up here, once I get this part done I'll fold down the front you know but I need to fold this under and that looks a little long doesn't it? Where are my scissors? Here you are. I'm going to go ahead and trim this lining again about a half inch longer than my um, folded edge of my jacket just to make it a little neater as I go. Okay and once again folding it up so about a quarter inch of the fabric is showing pinning it in place and I'm going to make the same little invisible whip stitch kind of things across the bottom here of my back first and then we'll tackle the front pieces. I've got my back done here so now I have pinned my front same method just overlapping here where the back seam is and I'm going to once again needle and thread sew this on both front sides. Okay, that's coming together very well. The bottom is done. Oops, I had to clip a pearl off. It's looking lovely. So the very last thing I need to do is put my chain on and this is a fairly lightweight chain. It's more for the aesthetic than the weight um, but we're going to go for it anyway and I am just going to start stitching my chain about an inch in from the side here and I am going to be putting it so it is up in the lining area um, but probably you know only about a quarter inch or so of lining is going to be shown underneath it maybe half an inch that actually looks a little bit better about like that and just stitch it on by hand all the way across the bottom. Me. I 
sin is plain to see. I'm living my bucolic life.